Esther chapter number 1. Now, we'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over a hundred and seven and twenty provinces. He reigned over 127 countries. He's a pretty powerful dude. In verse 2. That in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him, when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and fourscore days. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Lord, I'm glad that one day we're going to come morning be in glory. God, I'm glad for the promise you're coming back. God, I'm glad that we don't know about tomorrow, but we know who holds tomorrow. And Lord, we're convinced and persuaded that that which we've committed unto thee, you'll keep against that day. And Lord, you're in control. God, we're thankful for the good testimonies. Lord, we're thankful for folks just uh, openly just admitting they're thankful they're saved. And what a blessing that you're in the soul-saving business. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us tonight. I pray that, Lord, you would speak to our hearts You'd edify your people. You would encourage them, enlighten our minds to thy truth. And Father, we certainly do pray if there be any amongst us tonight unsaved that tonight would be the night of their salvation. We do pray for the saints of God that you would stir them, that you would stir unto their remembrance uh, the good things of God the day you came by and saved them. And God, you would uh, certainly uh, show them the days that you've come by and brought victory in the midst of their opposition. God, just uh, uh, reassure some things in their hearts and lives. And God, uh, fill their cup that when they leave forth from this place, they'll be able to tell others what great things God has done for them. Uh, Father, we ask you to put a hedge about us. We plead uh, for the blood of the Lamb over this place. Uh, God, we pray for Holy Ghost conviction uh, and Holy Ghost confirmation. Uh, Father, do a work in our midst tonight. Uh, help us use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your name. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to several things from this chapter. Uh, the first thing I want you to notice is the fame. The fame of Ahasuerus. In verse number 1, we find that he reigned from India even to Ethiopia over 127 provinces. There wasn't any one in that part of the world that did not know who King Ahasuerus was. We see the fame of him. I want you to notice the feast that he sets forth. In verse number 3, he says, In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia, media, the nobles and the princes uh, and the provinces being before him. And he showed them the riches of his glorious kingdom, the honor of his excellent majesty, many days, even a hundred and four score days. Uh, 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 if you take 180 days and divide it by 30, you got six months. Now that's a feast. Six months of just revelry and feasting and showing off all that he had amassed in overcoming and conquering those 127 provinces. Hmm? There's a lot of people like to show off, don't they? There's a lot of people like to take a lot of credit. Uh, and they like to relish and rub people's noses in it. We see the fame, we see the feast. Now notice the flaunting. In verse number 11. Now, I don't have time to go into all these verses, but I'm getting somewhere. Verse 11, he's commanded his servants to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look upon. I mean, it's bad enough that he showed them all of his riches. It's bad enough that he showed them all his gold and all that he's amassed. I mean, there's one portion here that said where they were drinking out of gold vessels. 
It's one thing to show off and, and, and show off his military and show off his palace and show off all these things. Uh, show off all the feast, all the food uh, that is brought before him. I imagine in those six months uh, uh, they're seeing food that the commoners uh, uh, never got to see. It's one thing to show off all of that, but now he's going to flaunt his queen before them. Parade her out in front of them so they could look on her and really lust for her. Hmm? We see the flaunting. Hmm? Now let me just say this. Y'all a little sober tonight. What kind of man wants to show off his wife to other men? Hmm? Hmm? That, that, that's not much of a man in my estimation. Hmm? I mean, if, if you study the Word of God... A husband's to love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, he's to uh, provide for her a manly affection, but also he's to provide for her security and safety. I imagine the worst place you want to have a, fair, a woman fair to look upon, as the Bible says, in front of a bunch of drunks. Hmm? And yet he's wanting to flaunt her. Huh? Notice, if you will, the forbidding. Hallelujah for somebody that's got some standards. Look at verse 12. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. She says, not so. I'm not going in front of all them drunk, drunken bozos. I'm not going to do it. Amen. Now, in this day and age, that's admirable. In that day and age, it's unheard of. As we brought out this morning, you didn't come before the king unless he sent for you. But if he sent for you and you didn't come, he could have your head taken off. Open rebellion. Now this is the queen, and the queen tells the king, no. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say they weren't used to that in that day. We see the forbidding. Now notice the fury. Look at verse number 12 again. Therefore the king was very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Here he is being a big show off and he's going to show the final prize that he has. And she says no. And it made him look like a fool. And he got mad. He got real mad. He got redneck mad. I mean he's mad. Hmm? Now I want to draw your attention to verse number 10. Here's where we're going to get our theme from tonight or thought. On the seventh day when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mahuman, Bizda, Harbona, Bigtha, Abagtha, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king to bring Vashti the queen. Now we got seven men mentioned there. These men are his chamberlains we would note them as being officers or uh, really as far as our system of government these are his cabinet members these men know everything about him they have gained his confidence he uh, is ultimately trustworthy of them and he has sent them to send word to the queen now you know me I know there's something about names in the Bible. So when I began to read this and study this, Brother Donald, I'm thinking there's something about these guys' names that's important to the story here. So I began to research what their names meant. Can I say that Mahuman means faithful? Can I say that Biztha means a double gift? It means he's blessed with talent and he's blessed with wisdom. Can I say that Harbona means a sword? Can I say Bigtha means gift of God? Or we would call his name Grace. Can I say that Abagtha means fortunate one? We would refer to him as one who received mercy. Zathar means overcomer or conqueror. And carcass means the covering of a lamb. Now, I don't know about you, but if you look at these men's names, uh, 
they ring out what a testimony. These names uh, should have been an example uh, to Ahasuerus, and I believe that he had them in those positions because of their character. And you know that in Bible times, uh, if a man's name did not fit their character, they would uh, change their name. Uh, and we find that uh, every day in his cabinet, men that he looked upon, men that he talked to, men that he depended on, uh, men that carried out the king's business, uh, you find one who is faithful. Uh, you find one who's got a double gift, uh, double blessing from the Lord. Uh, you find one a sword. We know the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Uh, we find gift of God, grace. Uh, we find a fortunate one, mercy. Uh, we find there's an overcomer. Thanks be unto God for those that are overcomers, that conquer, uh, that are able to overcome what comes against them. Uh, and then the covering of the Lamb. What a blessing uh, uh, for the blood of the Lamb that has covered me. Uh, out of where God doesn't see my sin anymore. These are examples to the king. I'm going to preach for just a few minutes tonight on ignoring the examples. What these men stood for just in their names should have warned the king. And he ignored them. He ignored them and threw a drunken feast. He ignored them and he wanted to flaunt his wife. Had he not ignored the example set before him, he wouldn't have had his family broke up because he puts his Vashti out from being queen. It wouldn't have affected the kingdom. Uh, his nobles said, you've got to do something with her because his word gets through all these 127 provinces uh, that women don't have to obey their husbands. We're all in a mess. He keeps his kingdom in bondage. He has no victory and allows a wicked man by the name of Haman to slip in and about destroy the greatest part of his kingdom. He ignored the examples. Got to thinking about that. What causes one to ignore the, the witnesses or the warnings or the examples that God puts in our lives? I mean, how many times does God have to warn us from the Word of God? How many times does God have to allow circumstances to come into our lives to get our attention? for us to not pay attention to God. How many uh, things has God placed in our lives or how many people has God placed in our lives? I mean, we're with that excuse. Uh, I, I hear some of the most feeble excuses why people can't serve God. And then you look at somebody like Miss Noreen's mother who's got Alzheimer's on her deathbed and she's still serving God. How many people does God have to put in our lives who are faithful? How many people does God have to put in our lives, uh, 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 my dear friends, who uh, 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 testifies of the grace of God, what God's done for them? Uh, how many people does God have to have stand up and talk about the mercy of God? Uh, how many times has God had to show you mercy? Uh, how many folks has God used in your life uh, who's overcame some things? Uh, uh, we've got folks in this building that's overcame cancer, it's overcame uh, uh, other great problems in their lives. Uh, how many times do we need to be reminded about the blood of the Lamb, uh, about the Word of God, and about all the things God has set forth for us to be victorious? Sure. And yet people still ignore the examples. Brother Phil and I was talking about church, and he started asking me about my grandpa. He said, all these years later, and that's still fresh in your mind, because I had an example that I didn't ignore. Hmm? Can I say this? Because generations have ignored the examples in our country, our country today is divided. Amen. We have a government that doesn't see eye to eye on anything. It amazes me, the one crowd that used to stand for something until Trump got elected, now they flipped on it. He's trying to do the very things that they wanted to do before he got elected, now they're against it. Hmm? They're so divided because they're so afraid somebody's going to get credit other than them. Amen. They could care less about the American people. Our country's divided. I mean, some instances, black is white and white is black. It's crazy. This country's gone insane. You know why? We've ignored the examples. Do you understand the Bible says all nations that forget God shall be turned into hell? 
Do you realize this country was founded on the principles and oracles of the Word of God? Do you realize that our forefathers, a lot of them whose statues are being uh, uh, torn down or, or, or being destroyed, uh, a lot of them, uh, uh, they were not perfect men. They did not live perfect lives, but they did have a, a sense enough to know that if God uh, uh, breathes a nation, if God can't build it, then nobody can, and we better put our faith and trust in God. Uh, George Washington himself said, America is founded uh, on the Christian faith. Uh, uh, my dear friends, we have strayed so far. Do you realize that as late as 1880 uh, you could not testify in a court of law if you did not believe in Almighty God? Uh, I'm telling you, we've got to the place uh, where everything goes but Christianity. Our nation is divided. We even had a Supreme Court decision come forth and say that uh, uh, casinos are essential but churches aren't. Have not those justices read the First Amendment of the Constitution? They have, but yet they want to play politics. Our country is divided. Our country is diseased. And I'm not talking about COVID-19. I'm talking about the disease of sin runs in our, in our cities and in our towns. Uh, the reason during COVID-19 they shut churches down, they didn't shut liquor stores down, they said because without liquor people would go insane. They proved without church some people didn't go insane. Many of them haven't even opened up yet. We have a sin disease in America. Can I say this? Our country is in disarray. Wasn't that many weeks ago that on one weekend, 111 of our cities had riots going on in them? In disarray. Now listen to me. What happened to that man that died, George Floyd, was wrong, and those men should pay a price for it. That was wrong. My son's a police officer. He'll tell you it's wrong. But where is the outcry for the black man that put his knee on the neck of a baby last week. A little baby, a defenseless baby, put his knee on it, symbolizing that black lives mean more than white lives. God said he's no respecter of persons. God's for all lives. But isn't it amazing we're not burning down any cities this week because of what happened to that little baby? Hmm? We're in disarray. It's a mess. Uh, people are afraid to even speak their minds. And when I seen where there was a poll, 62% of Americans are afraid to say who they stand for in this election because they're afraid that something's going to happen to their house. 62% of people polled. Hmm? Our country's in disarray. One of the great privileges of being American is you have the right to vote. We have a right to select our leaders. But if you stand for one side of the aisle on this thing, they'll browbeat you to death. Can I help you something? Stand anyway. Hmm? But listen, there's something that causes people to ignore the warnings. Let me give you a few things. We'll go to the house. Can I say, first of all, ignorance causes people to ignore the warnings. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 17, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth will not walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Uh, Acts seventeen thirty says, In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Uh, people can have a great education and be ignorant. And there are a lot of people that are ignorant. They've ignored the warnings. We know that Israel went into captivity because uh, be times God often sent them prophets who would stand and preach. They're going to go into captivity except you repent. And they ignored the prophets. They stoned the prophets. They killed the prophets. You know what happened? Ahasuerus showed up and Israel was in captivity. You know what's going to happen to America? If America don't get right with God, America's going under. You can mark her down. And people are ignorant. But this is all it's going to take to save America. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Oh, I feel so much better. I can't breathe. I'm going to die. <laughs> I told my Sunday school class this morning, the CDC, uh, uh, the WHO, and all these outfits have all, on their website, will tell you the mask doesn't do anything with this COVID thing. It's all fear tactic. The people ignorantly will listen to anybody. It sounds like they know what they're talking about. They'll ignore the examples because of their ignorance. Why do you think so many people think Joyce Myers is a great preacher? Well, I can tell you there's three verses that show she's not called of God. Number one, she can't be the husband of one wife. That's what the book says. That's one of the qualifications. Number two, the Bible says that a woman should not usurp authority over the man in the church. Hmm? And number three, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, let women keep silence in the church. So those three right there disqualify her, but why does she have such a great following? Because people are ignorant. Why do you think the devil works so hard to change the, the, the scriptures and why so many people use false Bibles? Because they won't tell you that Joyce Myers is not qualified. And by the way, Joyce Myers doesn't care anything about the souls of men. What Joyce Myers cares about is selling books. The same with Joel Osteen and so many others. And why do people follow them in masses? Because they're ignorant. This is all you need to know about Joel Osteen. Larry King, when he still had his nightly talk show. And by the way, CNN's went down the toilet since he left. You're welcome. But Larry King, he went through a spell, and I guess he was doing some soul searching. He was a Jew. But he was doing some soul searching because he had on all kinds of religious people, and he would ask them all the same question, what's it take to go to heaven? That's what he was asking them. None of them would give him a straight answer. Joel Osteen refused to. He flipped and flopped and did everything, and he wouldn't tell Larry King nothing. Larry King kept pushing him to the wall. What's it take? What do you believe? What do you believe? He wouldn't tell him anything. That's all you need to know about him. You know the only one that told Larry King how to get to heaven? Franklin Graham. I don't agree with everything Franklin Graham says or does, but he did tell Larry King, you must be born again. I hmm? hope Larry King got born again. But I'm here to tell you, people will follow anybody, they'll do anything, they'll listen to anything, because they're ignorant. Uh, one of the news commentators on 700 WLW, Mike McConnell, said this years ago. He said, people no longer read. They just listen to the talking points and make up their mind. He said, if you want to know the truth, the information's out there, just read. But people would rather be ignorant because we live in a drive through society. We want everything instantaneously. We want our food instantaneously. We want everything here quick, now, 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 now. I don't have time to read. I'll just listen to what some commentator has to say about it. i got news for you. Walter Cronkite no longer delivers the news. We do not have journalists anymore. We have people that get talking points and they read what is on the teleprompter. They put pretty people in front of the camera and they put uh, 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 people that are wicked behind the camera who tells them what to say. Just read. You'll find out what's going on. But people will ignore the examples because of ignorance. Can I say this? They'll ignore the examples because of intolerance. And to be intolerant means to be willful or stubborn, obstinate, proud. Psalms 10, 4 says, The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not at all in his thoughts. Proverbs 21, 24, A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. 1 Samuel 15, 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as, as iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. There are some who ignore the examples because they're intolerant. They believe they're right, and they don't want to listen to anything else. Hmm? Well, there's nothing wrong with being right, but you better make sure you're right with God and what God says. There's a lot of people that are obstinate and proud. I've learned this in my nearly 60, 60 years of existence. You're never too old to learn. And you don't know it all because half of it hadn't been told. Mm. 
some ignore the examples because of ignorance, some because of intolerance, but can I say this? Some because of indulgence. Look again in verse number 10. And on the seventh day when the heart of the king was merry with what? Wine. Wine. Well, he's in a good drunken stupor. Hmm. Can I say America is guilty of the sin of indulgence? Can I say it's filtered off into churches? Did not Jesus say in Revelation 3 to the church of Laodicea, Because thou thinkest thou art increased with goods and have need of nothing, you know not that thou art poor, wretched, blind, and naked? We think we've got everything we need. Indulgence. Indulgence in sinful practices. It's amazing some of the things that comes out on some of these people in high positions and authority that they've been doing for years. And they just thought they'd get away with it. The Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. Right. And they're indulging in sinful practices. They're indulging in satisfying pleasures. Uh, we found out through this virus that what used to make America go, America can do without, and that is the world of sports. Sports was America's God. I have a real tough time with millionaires who've never done anything but use the God-given talent they have, uh, who will use platforms that they have no idea about and tell me how I'm supposed to vote, how I'm supposed to live, and how I'm supposed to do when all they can do is catch a ball, hit a ball, throw a ball. Uh, they're just knuckleheads. Yep. Yep. Uh, but I have no use for anybody that when old glory is waving, they'll take a knee. Right. Men and women died for us to have the liberties and the rights that we have in America. And if you don't respect America, that's fine. But do not make a platform of it because I do. And don't expect me to take it lightly. Hmm? Most of these ball players are nothing more than whoremongers. Most of them are nothing more than uh, than just wicked people. They think rules don't apply to them. They get their Ferraris and do 110 miles an hour like uh, Chapman did when he pitched for the Reds and think that they should be able to get off because he can throw a baseball 105 miles an hour. You get in your car and do 105 miles an hour and see how, how, how long you stay on the road. Hmm? Hmm? I'm just telling you, indulgence and satisfying pleasures and sinful practices indulgence in stockpiles of plenty America's got the mentality that the one who has the most wins hmm? uh, John the Baptist had the right philosophy uh, I must decrease and he must increase Amen. can I say many have tried to appease the flesh with the world's vices only to become slaves to their own lust hmm. The Bible tells us, 1 John chapter 2, not to be given to the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, or the pride of life. And love not the things of the world. Amen. Yet so many, even Christian people, long for what the world has. Do you understand if you're saved, you own it all? And one day you're going to have it all. Yeah. So why don't you just live for Jesus and not worry about all that stuff? But so many people are so obsessed with having, well, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. Well, my grandparents were the Joneses. They didn't have much, but they had a whole lot of God. I, I highly recommend keeping up with what they had. Hmm? Uh, can I say some ignore the examples because of insubordination? They're disobedient, not submissive to authority. And while I'm there, and since I've already made a bunch of you mad, every one of these movements, whether it be what happened in Missouri a few years ago, what happened in Baltimore a few years ago, what's happened, you know, across the United States now, and what's happening in Portland, what's happening in, you know, Seattle, and what's happening in all these places where they're doing all this rioting and picketing and looting and destroying public property for a cause. How come every one of these men, and again, every life is precious and nobody deserves to die this way, but how come everyone that dies has nine or ten warrants out for their arrest and they're running from the cops or they do something to hurt a cop? Yeah. But the cops are wrong. 
How about the dude in Atlanta that took a cop's taser and tased the cop, and then the cop shot him, and now the cops, you know, he, they want to fire him? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? How about New York City where they said defund the police, and now the chief of police resigned? He said this guy's done more to hurt the police force's menta uh, 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 mentality and, and motivation, and he's done more to hurt the city. He said, I cannot serve under him anymore. Huh? I almost ordered a T-shirt there, and I said defend the police, not to defund them. Do you realize without law and order in this country, we'd really be in a mess? Hmm? Why do you think they don't want law and order? It's because they're insubordinate. I was always taught if you got pulled over by a police officer, it was yes, sir, no, sir, and whatever he said, you did it. Huh? You run from them, you, you're already admitting you're guilty of something. What can I say? It's happening in churches too. Well, I get mad. I don't like the way the preacher preaches. I don't. Want, I don't like that. I don't like how the church does this. I don't like how the church does that. I don't. Insubordinate. I don't have time to read you all the verses about obeying they that had to rule over you, for they watch for your souls. I don't have time for all that, but I do have time for this. Jeremiah six sixteen. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Second Chronicles 33.10, And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. When you ignore God, you're going to have to face God. You're going to have to face the wrath of God. Can I say this? The last reason why some ignore the examples is because of indifference and that simply means a lack of concern or interest in seeing the importance or the meaning thereof I'm glad Miss Noreen's mother Miss Opal on her deathbed seen the importance of telling that lady about Jesus she wasn't indifferent she was plugged into the program hmm uh Exodus 32 verse 1 and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him up make us gods which shall go before us for as for this Moses the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt we want not what has become of him and can I say there's a lot of people don't want the old time way they don't want old time preaching they don't want old time singing they don't want old time worship they don't want old time service for God they don't want that they want the newfangled thing they want the coffee bars in the back they want the donuts you know uh, uh, ready for them uh, they want to come in in a casual atmosphere they want to come in and have somebody inspire them somebody give them some self help lessons uh, uh, then they want to kick the pews out of the way well they don't have pews they got chairs they want to kick them out of the way and have Christian aerobics at night all hold hands and sing kumbaya and everything's wonderful the only problem is Jesus isn't in the midst of any of that mess hmm? I'm reminded he turned some tables over and ran some money chambers out of the temple for making merchandise of the house of God can I say there's a lot of indifference going on because people have ignored the examples I said all that to say this tonight God has put some people in your lives. He's put some truths in your lives. He's given you some messages. He's given you some examples. He's given you some people you can look at and say, boy, they had God in their life. Not for you to turn from it, but for you to say, I desire to have a double portion of what they had. I want, I want to serve the God that they knew. I want the blessings of God evident in my life like it was in their life. Yeah. Not to ignore the examples. Mm -mm. Too many people, they forget the message by Monday morning that they heard on Sunday. And Brother Tommy, if they forget it, means they've ignored it. Now, why, why a message like this? Because... There are grave consequences when we ignore what God has put before us. He cost Ahasuerus and his household 
and it cost him much more in his country. America's in the shape she's in because she's, ign she's ignored what thus saith the Lord. Christians are cowered down in their houses, afraid of everything going on because they've ignored the examples of the Word of God. They're living by fear, not by faith. I crack up every time I turn on the on Pleasant Valley from out here. They got the big sign out there that faith, you know, fear is contagious, but so is faith. And yet they're not open. So we know what is motivating them. So preacher, you ought not pick on the places. Well, they make it so easy. tells me they don't have a whole lot of faith listen Brother James sings a song about if heaven and earth pass away I can still stand yes. on the Lord yes. so let me, let me ask you something are you tired of seeing everything in the mess What's going to change when we start paying attention to the examples? We start embracing the truths of God. We start making stands and saying, Sirs, I believe God. My dear friends, you know what the world has really always wanted to know? If what we have is real. Brother Ray, when you saw that change in your mom, you knew she had something you didn't have. Thanks be unto God, two weeks later, you experienced the same thing. Him. The world wants to know if what we got is real. Don't you think that we are indebted for the gospel's sake to show them something that's real? To show them we're not afraid. But it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. That there is hope. There is peace. There is joy. That God is no respecter of person. You know what solved all this race thing? Jesus. Hmm? It cracks me up. I have great friends of all different colors of you know you all know I talked to brother Sammy yesterday called me from St. Lucia it's good to hear his voice there's there's not anybody I love any more in the world than brother Sammy he's a great friend his church embraces me I don't look like any of them they don't look like me but we all know Jesus yeah. brother Sammy tells me all the time I'm the assistant pastor there huh he said, I don't know what you've done to these people, but they love you. Uh, it's amazing what truth will do. Love will do. What kindness will do. You know, the answers for this world is what the epistles tell us to the church. If we just live by that, we can impact our world. But can I say, how can we expect them to receive him when we don't? When we ignore him? When we don't embrace Him, when we don't do the extra things, the extra time in prayer, the extra time in study, the extra time seeking Him, when we get caught up worshiping the ball players, you see, we'll never win the world acting like the world. And that's why this coffee drinking crowd, they can't even understand it. You know what will win the world? When they see Jesus. And Jesus only identifies with folks that identify with him. I wonder tonight, instead of ignoring an example, will you be an example? Will you show the world what Jesus can do in a life? Will you tell the world, I used to be a junk, drunk religious man, but now I'm saved on my way to heaven? Amen. Hmm? Well, you keep telling your little neighborhood friends, Lucas, even though they get mad at you, keep telling them Jesus saved you. Huh? Shoeless, keep telling that preacher up there at that other church Jesus saved you. Hmm? It's all right. But how about, Miss Tina said it in her testimony. Shame on us, these kids are excited about being saved. Why don't we be an example? 
why don't we let the world see what Jesus has done for us? Has he done something for you? Well, why don't you show somebody? Be an example. Don't ignore the examples set before you. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come and get a song of invitation. Maybe tonight you just want to come and thank Jesus for saving you. Maybe you want to come tonight and say, God, give me some Holy Ghost boldness to be an example. Maybe you need to come tonight and say, Lord, help me to show somebody the love of Christ. Lord, put somebody in my path that I can befriend and tell them how good Jesus is. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for first loving us. Help us to be an example. Bless now. We'll bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.